Hello my friends. What I have for you today is an electronic lid screw made by a German manufacturer Rocketronics. It costs about $320. It's possible to control just one axis, the lid screw, or also the cross slide. This electronic lid screw, for example, controls both axes. My little Nano ELS lid screw controls just one axis. A famous project from Russia called Digital Feed, been in development for about 10 years, that can also control two axes, just like Rocketronics. So here are some other hardware that you would need to get a two-axis electronic lead screw going. Power source for 48 volts in my case. The motors mounted on the lathe. Two stepper drivers for them. Electronic lead screw controller. And encoder on the spindle. On the back of the device we have a huge abundance of ports, which are very neatly laid out and easy to connect to. First off is the ground. It's very important to connect the ground, otherwise the device will just be hanging at random times. At least that's what I experienced. Then there is 12 volt DC power. Then if you have fancy motors or you have fancy adapters, you can connect your stepper motors using RG45 cable. But if you don't, just like most of us, then they are also split out over here. So this is the lead screw and this is the cross slide. This is where you would connect the spindle encoder and there is also a huge selection of additional inputs and outputs. Uh, you can input an error signal, a limits for Z and X in emergency stop, there is ground, and outputs for cooling, for spindle stop, and output power. You can also connect an external pendant. You also have two mounting holes uh, for which I made uh, this adapter from two pieces of flat bar welded together. Slide the device over the bolts and then tighten them from the back. Really quickly, going through the interface of this controller, on the right button we have on-off button, then we have settings. In settings we can change language to German or English, then also configure encoder, Z motor, X motor, uh, set up different parameters for the operations, configure inputs and outputs, for example e-stop and coolant, fast and slow movement of the axes. It's manual and the relative position is shown over here. When we have zeroed on our stock, we can set relative coordinates to zero. We can also turn off some of the axes. Right now I can spin the x-axis freely. And also turn off the z. You can hear that the motor stopped humming. I also have precision control over the movement of the axes. For example, if I hold this button, it says z-step for one second. Now, using this rotary encoder, I can move it by a tenth of a millimeter. And if I press it and rotate, it will move by half a millimeter. Same for X. These buttons would be used to start and stop an automatic program. Now the most interesting, what are the modes that this controller has? If we just scroll right, it's Turning, boring, facing, parting, undercut, thread, cone, radiuses, all kinds of radiuses you can think of. Then there is a round groove and a straight groove. There is also grinding, which is moving axis without moving the encoder necessarily. And drilling, when you mount the drill into the cross slide. You can also check the angle of the spindle and uh, use it as a basic gearbox to simulate the gears that could have been here and change the pitch. It can also be left and right gearbox. To make a groove for the belt, I can just go to the straight groove mode, set my feed rate and then it automatically detects uh, the parameters of the groove by the belt type that I choose. So there's a whole bunch of belt types to choose from. I think for demonstration I'll just try the, the smallest one.
Well, that looks perfect. Another super cool mode is external cone. I can change the parameters for the depth and the length of the cut manually. Or I can just go down into the cone ratio and set it, for example, to Morse Taper 2, which is 1 to 20.02. Now just a lot of scrolling. And here is Morse Taper 2. And here's the finished taper. The angle is really small, so it's kind of hard to notice. And obviously it's too thick for an actual Morse taper too, but you get the idea. Another cool mode is turning, which allows to take material to the left and to the front in multiple passes. Now I can change the number of passes, but I actually like this one, so it would be 4 passes by 4800mm and then 1 tenth as a final pass. So I click start. That was turning 2 mm deep. The holy grail of electronic lid screws, automatic thread cutting. Set the pitch to 2. We're going to go 15 mm to the left. There are different cutting modes that are possible here. And I can also set a conical thread here, which is mind blowing. No! Oh, now it's working. That looks like a perfectly good thread if you ask me. Now, as a summary, this is an amazing device that I can wholeheartedly recommend. And it blows out of the water most other options that I'm aware of. Using the lathe just with a manual gearbox, Nano ULS doesn't really have many functions. Digital Feed has more functions, but it's very hard to build and it's also rather hard to use, at least for me. Obviously, if you have been using Digital Feed for a long time, then maybe it's very easy for you to operate it. Rocketronics, price is obviously an issue, but some people manage to spend the same amount of money on Digital Feed. It's also very easy to get, I think they ship worldwide, and it's very easy to operate. Now, here are some of the things that I didn't figure out how to do using Rocketronics. Probably they aren't actually available at the moment. The automatics uh, to do the left thread requires moving the cutter to the to the back side which is not possible on some lathes also on mine the left cone how do i do that obviously i can swap my stock ideally i would like to be able to do the left cone when there is nothing to hold the stock on the other side also i didn't figure how to do a sphere yes i can do half a sphere but how do i do the other part i mean if there's nothing to hold on on this side it looks like there's no automation for multi-star threads uh, you have to manually align for every start. Gearbox seem to be losing the thread when you use the manual move buttons. There are small glitches here and there that you saw. And also there doesn't seem to be an option to move in a hundredth of a millimeter increments using the step mode. Now, none of this is a huge deal, but just something to be aware of. Or maybe I'm wrong in some of this. Overall, as I said, I bought this device with my own money and I'm super happy with it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.